it's going to be a big day today. We've got the Victron DC DC charger to go in. We've got other bits and bobs. We might frame out some of the uh, woodwork around. We've just got a big day of doing stuff. Last night was a cold night in the van, so today we're going to be installing or attempting to install some electrics. Along with hopefully some uh, framework for some of the units. Now here's the plan. We like to start with the plan just because it never actually does go to plan. The battery is all the way under there. We're hoping to bring the cables around and try and get the batteries as far to sort of that area as possible. That way when the boardings on the garage, the fuse box and stuff can go on the other side. We bought an eBay kit. We've got the 30 amp DC to DC non-isolated Victron charger and a ton of wires and conduit and everything the whole kit cost 164 pounds on ebay if i can find it again i'll link it in the description i have no idea how to get the battery cable from the battery underneath there to inside so uh let's get the battery cover off and have a look a couple of torque bolts around here and get that off keep them nice and safe and we've also got to get this cover off here just unhooks that side and unhooks that side we've got something special for here because this is where oh the jack does go there and the jack is actually there damn it damn it i thought the jack wasn't there so i wasted 20 quid on a new jack <clears throat> that cover should just come off and in theory this is just a carpet plate that should just it's amazing what you learn on youtube videos isn't it come off just like that now with the way i removed that i didn't actually see the battery so let's go and have a look i hope there's some tabs on the battery oh there's the battery hey there he is we took the fuse cover off and this is so that we can have a look and see if we can just connect to that or do we have to connect and try and get our fingers into that buzz bar down there if we can connect to that it just makes life easier we can run the cable underneath this piece of rug just here and then that way somehow bring it out over here maybe for, feed it around here and out over this side that'll be the ideal scenario worst case scenario straight down there and across the floor all the way around cover it in conduit let's have a look at what's in the kit you go for the non-isolated if you've got a van and the isolated if you've got a motorhome we've got a ton of wires extra clips instruction manual more extra wires more extra conduit this is everything already cut to length that you actually need the reason i went for this is because it's already crimped and heat shrinked i don't have the tools to be able to crimp them safely and properly and this is probably going to end up a bodge job but we shall see i'm not professional in the slightest we've just got the cable passed it straight through towards the fuse box we got a 60 amp fuse and we've not actually put it in the fuse housing just yet but we've connected that we'll mount that housing somewhere around on the fuse panel just to keep it nice and safe and secure so we know where everything is now this side connects to the battery then connected it to the battery it's that cable there coming under that's connected underneath the main terminal that now means this side is completely live when it comes around to actually connecting it i'll put the fuse in there and that make the whole system live screw the fuse down run the cable safely hidden away all the way on there comes out there and we're going to run it along the floorboards all the way across we have covered it in this conduit just here and fitted the dc to dc victron charger up here that's all going to be encased in with the batteries keeping it nice and safe leaving space for solar panels which will be on a later build so subscribe for that if i'm thick enough to do this and anybody can do this secure the cable down with some clips if you want to wire it the same way i am this is the non-isolated version this is how you wire it screenshot that and you can use it for your own um benefit later i guess once the positive going in is connected connect the ground the ground goes round to the negative on the battery terminal and then to your ground point wherever that may be that is when you'll start to see the bluetooth light flicker and it will come on you then go through the app and set it up to exactly your battery specifications. Then connect your positive over to a 60 amp fuse and back up into the charger. That is the charger fitted and completed. Before this is gonna charge, you need this. This is a remote loop start and it plugs it in just under there like that. This is what's gonna tell the Victron when the battery has started, plug it up that is it done well just so that is the reason that i actually done that in like an educational format was because every single video on youtube to do with the victron is 25 minutes long and it doesn't need to be 25 minutes long I'm just back from a test driver and it didn't blow up we actually got quite far with that we built a compartment to go over it with enough space for another battery in there that is nice secure solid and it's secured in that side and on the other side so it can't move around 
we've taken a positive and negative of that straight up to the fuse box. We've got to tidy up the wiring, don't mind that. So now, when we put the diesel heater in, the fan, the lights, the USBs, everything, we can just connect it straight to that instead of having to mess around getting the batteries out. Now, we've left this side open because that will come straight up and blocked off by the piece of board that blocks the garage off. I did it. I did a thing again. These are amazing little magnets. Now, what I've done, I've stuck them inside the window frame. I've got one there, middle, and down the bottom. And they basically stick to, see that metal frame just there? They basically stick to that. So that when it's, oh, there we go, I've got them off. When the glue's dry on them, I'll be able to, one, put this all the way up to the top, and they will just stick to that. Because the biggest problem at the minute is, while you're driving, it's rattling. So when it's dry, I'll be able to put them all the way up, they'll stick to that top one. If I only want half light, I can stick them down to the halfway mark. If I want full light, I can stick them to it there. There it is. So yeah, another job done. Now the light is starting to fade for today. Things always take longer than expected, so I'm gonna have to arrange the bed in such a way where I can actually sleep tonight, because look. <laughs> Remember in one of my last videos when I impulse bought 10 liters of white paint? I've decided to try and start using it. And I don't know why I've done it, because one, I'm not going to finish it, the light's about to fade. Number two, it's going to freeze tonight, so the chances are this is going to freeze before it's had time to dry. It's just another impulsive part about this camper van. Danielle's here to help us. Wave, Danielle. She looks at me dead sarcastic. She's cracking on with some paintwork while I'm fitting the diesel heater. We've been under the van. That's where we go. We drilled the hole through there as a start line. Put the turret plate on the top. And the way we're going to do it is different to everybody else. We've got a 64 mil hole saw and that basically goes over that one and it completely drills out that full section there then over that one again completely drills that section out saves doing 114 mil all the way around and saves drilling really individual holes there's no going back now we've started i get that far through and the goddamn battery dies let me show you the actual magnets there you go they just hold it to the actual wood so they don't they don't rattle while i'm driving so if we go down oof Let's shut that side and that side. Now we've got half, half mast. Would you call it half mast, love? Half up, half down. Half up. Is the, half but was the chicken laid first or was the egg? The chicken. The chicken. Why the chicken? Because the chicken evolved from something. From what? <laughs> what did the chicken evolve from? <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna get me back for that later. <laughs> oh, the van's got a boo boo. Now this is a fun bit. They've got the fuel tank, and we've got to start building it all up. So we've got this little flat piece here and I've just had to drill a hole in it. Why do that? I've got this little noggin. That's what I'm gonna call it, a noggin. And I've gotta basically take the nut off, thread that entire outlet into the top and try and jiggle it around so that it comes out of that tiny little hole and then put the bolt back on. Shake it like a four picture. The way I did it, I stuck a wire through the hole, out the top, bent it over, stuck the fitting on. So in theory, with a bit of jiggling, now, that should, it's actually currently halfway up the, there you go. Slowly but surely, that'll come out the hot fitting hole. We rust prevent treated the exposed metal work and then we fitted the fuel tank into the back. We stuck the hose on the actual outlet and then stuck a hole through the floor ready for the fuel pipe. Don't tell her this, I'll never admit it to her, but she's actually a really good painter. She's done a lot better than what I would have done. With the exhaust and the air inlet fastened on tightly, we've got the fuel to do. The way we do that, we've got this little piece of hose here that squeezes over to the top of that. And then we've got this hose to go into the other side. Top tip though, when you're pushing this into there, it's really, really tight and really snug and it clips on with some clips, but you never know exactly how far you've gone in. Grab yourself a Sharpie, mark it, and then you know exactly how far you've gone in. And then we just have to get it, tip it over, drop it in there. And we have got some big, hefty anti-theft bolts uh, to hold it in place. Now the floor does bounce up and down because of the general ridges of it. Fire resistant sealant. So I'm just gonna pack loads of it around there and drop it straight in. Maybe just a tad over the top. We had to make sure it was nice and secure. So it's bolted in really solidly. We left that to cure overnight. Fasten the exhaust underneath facing towards the back of the van and the air inlet towards the front of the van. We ran the fuel hose along the brake line hose throughout the distance of the van. So let me explain around back here. Fuel tank, wrong place. I can't really fill it up, but we'll figure that out nearer the time. Comes out the bottom, down into the fuel filter, 
up to the fuel pump at a 30 degree angle, back down underneath the van, secured the whole way down the van, back up underneath the diesel heater. That is all getting boxed and it's not always gonna look that ugly. The plumbing here is quite easy. It's just Jubilee clips onto the big hose. We've got a T-junction, we've got two of these vents and an extra bit of hose just there. Pretty much have it going wherever you want. Now the wiring may look extremely confusing. However, it's been made simple. You've got plugs into absolutely everything. So you find the plug off the actual unit itself and you basically find the plug that matches that unit push them in together you've got one that goes to the unit one that goes from the wiring harness to the fuel pump and one that goes to this display connect the live up to your fuse box the neutral to your ground done who knew the chinese could make something so idiot proof like this and it's alive now obviously we still need to get some diesel and stuff like that so i ain't gonna mess around with it right now now it's time to get the max air fan on the roof there's the line we've drawn on the roof We've built the framework to go around the turret for the inside. Now it's time to drill more holes. We're going to go on the outside line, drill a hole there on all the corners, go up onto the roof and cut it all out. We've made one hole bigger than the rest and that's going to be the starting point for the jigsaw. Let's get everything on the roof to uh, start cutting another hole in this van. Sketchy as hell being on the roof. It's quite a tall van. Metal blade on the saw, plugged into the eco flow. There's our start hole and we just follow the holes all the way around. Give all the rough edges a good file. We've got to degrease the whole area all the way around, get it nice and clean, ready to adhere to the silicon. We've got to treat the exposed metal for rust. We'll leave all of those exposed edges to cure for around about half an hour before we hit the next stage. 522 Sikaflex all the way around it generously. You get it screwed down. The one I used were these self-tapping metal screws and all the way around the edge after you put the silicon on and it squishes it all out. I'm going to run my finger along that and get all the excess and put it all over the top of all the screws. I don't know how that's going to make a difference, but every other YouTuber seems to do it, so it must work. Just like that, like a glove. That's what the inside looks like. You can tell I've used enough uh, Sikaflex because it's all starting to pour through. Let's get the actual fan on. You drop the fan into place, then you've got two holes, one there and one there. You have to have the fan open to access these holes. Inside there is a rubber grommet, and you just drop two screws that come with it, straighten those two and two on the other side too. And then that's it. Time for the satisfying peel. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Woo woo, we done another thing. We done another thing, woo. It's just hope it doesn't rain. While it's drying, we're just gonna manually close the vent, just keep twisting that. You can see it slowly coming down on the inside. Then, in theory, it should be closed. Wiring it up can't be any easier. You've got two wires. If you have a look down, further down, be careful, the black wire is not negative. The black wire is positive, and over here, the white wire is negative. Run them together, we're gonna crimp the join just like that and then heat shrink over the top of it run it up over down because we've got something going there that's quite nice it's gonna it's made to hide all the wiring and stuff and then over to the fuse box just there Do you know what right i've had this box of electrical connections and heat shrinks and stuff the best part about two years and it's not got lost it's not everything's not fell out of it once i've not misplaced everything everything's all in exact color order Am I a bit autistic? Just like that, negative into the buzz bar, positive down there, the light's on because there is no fuse. There's the fuse, as soon as I put that in, it should work. There's your remote control, the temperature is set at 26, so if the fan detects the temperature is higher than 26, it'll automatically come on or circulate the air, it'll do something like that. Uh, the room temperature currently is 15 degrees, it's closed and it's off, so if I press that, oh, it's opening and it's come on. Now you've got the manual controls up there as well, and now let's have a look. So it's currently on, it's open, and it's set to take the air out, and it's set at 50%. So yeah, you can change absolutely all the settings you want just there. There is your Max Air Fan, or Max Fan Deluxe. That's what it's actually called. I think that's what it's actually called. Everyone keeps calling it wrong. I don't know. But yeah, I did a thing. I've got to buy some little clips, double-sided sticky tape clips to sort of hide some of that wiring and stuff like that. But I can't drive the van because I've got wet Sikaflex on the roof. Let me show you this. I've just realised I didn't show you the actual diesel heater working. Now, obviously, 
when the chair is going to be fitted in there it's all going to be boxed in i'll be able to put the vents exactly where i want and stuff so i'm not bother cutting any of the hoses or sticking any of the vents on you i've got a vent there and i've got a vent just there there is the control panel for now now i can manually operate it just there and i can set it to automatic i can do whatever i want however what i like to do instead is this key fob do 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 press on it's just clicked down there it's just turned itself on you can just hear the fan kicking on now i might actually leave that diesel heater on just to try and help cure the sicker flex a little bit that'll be a good test for the thermostat that's built into that too <laughs> this is epic i'm loving this i can't believe i've got so much done so quick and done loads of different stuff all within this little 15 minute video and i'm not taking up half an hour of your time just teaching you how to fit that if that's not worth you subscribing yeah hint hint with that done guys i'm gonna leave you to it thanks for tuning in i appreciate you all